Hey folks, this is Adam Pratt with Chaos to Memories, and I know some of you have been asking about how to use the Folder Publisher uh, plugin for Lightroom Classic to solve this problem. So let's say you have a bunch of folders, nested folders. In this case, these are photos of my camera collection. Uh, in a normal photo project, they would probably be uh, chronologically sorted folders, maybe divided by year or decade. Um, but the same problem exists where I have a bunch of files in a certain format, in this case DNG, or they could be raw files, and I want to export them to another format like TIFF or JPEG, but I want to retain the nested folder structure. Now Lightroom Classic will let you export one folder at a time, uh, or take a bunch of content and export it into one big folder, but if, I want, but if I want to retain this nested folder structure, that is not possible in an automated way with Lightroom. However, the JF, um, Jeffrey Friedel, he's the developer, he has this folder publisher plugin, and so I thought I'd show you how I set this up. It's uh, nice, quick, and easy. So you get the uh, plugin from his website, you can find it online, install it, uh, pay for it. I think he just charges a nominal donation charge, but it's quite valuable, so be generous. And once you have that installed, you just click Setup. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call it something super simple like JPEG export. Um, and then the publish tree root, this is one of the, there's a bunch of settings in here. This is really the only one of the few that I think really matters. I'm just going to click browse and I'm going to save this on my desktop. I'll create a new folder called like exported JPEGs. Uh, I'll click create that's selected and I'll choose that folder. So this is just telling Lightroom when I publish content using uh, this publish service, put it into this folder, okay? Uh, you could choose to rename the files or leave them as is. You can include video files. You can choose the uh, compression quality if you're using JPEG. So I normally set this up in the 70s. Uh, you could resize it if you just want smaller versions, for example. Uh, go through the options here. This would be key um, about metadata. If you've done a lot of metadata organization, you probably want to keep all that metadata and don't do any exceptions, but that's up to you. And then there are some more complicated settings here about um, what kind of metadata changes might trigger the need for a republish. If you read these settings and go through them, they're pretty self-explanatory, but pretty granular and detailed. To be honest with you, I just skip over all of these because in my workflow, this is a one-time process at the end. Once I'm confident that I'm completely done whatever it is I'm doing in this archive, uh, I may do uh, an export to JPEG and that's it. I'm not gonna go back and forth and do updates. I make sure um, that I'm done and ready to move on to the next milestone. So uh, at that point, you can read through these, but I just click save. So what that has done is it has made uh, the publish service with this JPEG export uh, that I named and it creates a collection here called photos to include and so what may be throwing people off is they may come in here and say hey I want to take this folder and drag it down or if you're really thinking smart you say hey I want to take this folder and drag it down um, and that's what I want to include and nothing happens well the trick is you don't need to drag folders you need to tell Lightroom what files to export because Lightroom exports files, not folders. So uh, in this case, I want to select this entire folder structure. And so I would just come over here, press Command A on the Mac or Control A on Windows. You see that all of the photos are highlighted and selected. And now I just click and drag those uh, 843 images over to the Photos to Include collection. I don't drag it here, I drag it here. And I know I'm dragging it in the right place because the drag target gets highlighted, it turns blue, or whatever the highlight color is in your operating system, there will be a visual indicator. So I drag it over there, give it a second, it adds those 843 images to that collection for that published service. Now, it doesn't start exporting automatically, which is nice because maybe I wanna change it or add to it or whatever. 
I can set that up however I want and then when I'm ready to finally do the export I select the photos to include and the grid changes here uh, and it'll show me new photos to publish 843 and at this point I'll click publish and this will probably take a moment it's just kind of inventorying all of the photos and the folders and the subfolders and so on and it's going to start in the top left corner you can track its progress and it takes a minute to get started up again it's kind of working and I won't uh, take the time for you to watch all 843 photos export that would be pretty tedious but it's starting to work and what we can see is uh, its progress so I can see it's already published about 20 photos and it's clicking them off pretty quickly and I can see new, let me twirl that up, and new photos to publish. We kind of see the progress bar not only up here in the left-hand corner, but we see some progress along the way. Uh, for some reason, this popped up a modified photo to republish. Um, seems more like a glitch than a feature. The nice thing is, uh, even if that happens, when this is done, I can just click publish again. And if I did uh, change a crop or add some metadata or something like that, uh, then literally with one click and just probably a couple seconds it would republish those at the end um, in case I had maybe I'd inadvertently made some changes there or there was just a, a glitch in the process but pretty quick to export those just to prove what's happening here we won't see it complete but if I switch back to the finder uh, here is my camera collection um, uh, catalog and the folders uh, for that project but then if I double click the exported JPEGs, here's the camera collection. And you can see that Lightroom with that plugin uh, is creating all of my JPEGs um, as a part of that process. And it's doing it in all the subfolders that mirror what I had with Lightroom. So I hope that makes sense and enjoy the process.